The left-wing takeover of the Tory party continues as we now have a new Conservative parliamentary candidate who is in favour of more migration, the woke agenda and plagiarism. <laughs> Seems like when it comes to politically cheating, it's the whole of the political spectrum in the Westminster bubble. Whether it's the Labour Party or the Tories or the Liberal Democrats, they're all producing a certain type of politico and politicians. They're all a bit dodgy, a bit corrupt and a bit left wing. And by a bit, I'm being extremely generous. Let's talk about the latest <laughs> entry to the Westminster Swamp. This is Shabnam Nasimi, a Tory candidate, is involved with an organization called the Conservative Friends of Afghanistan. Okay, so that, that's her background as well, by the way. But what, what is she about? What sort of stuff does she believe in? Mm, first things first. 50 50 Parliament. She's part of this woke organization again that wants to push for more female. Uh, politicians in uh, in Westminster, regardless of merits or quality, um, despite the fact that we made good progress until now. But on the plus side, seems like this 50-50 organization, at least they know what a female is. They know what a woman is. So yay! <laughs> Not everything is doom and gloomy. But she is now quite, she's going everywhere. She's been invited to go on LBC, on Ian Dale's show, and Cross Questions, and all the other media outlets the usual me mainstream media outlets talk about afghanistan and the tories okay but the biggest thing is that recently she's been exposed for plagiarism <clears throat> now you might think on the surface it's not really a big deal but it is one politics and politicians are a reflection on the rest of us the society that we have two it's basic indication that they're that the politician who does basic dodgy stuff that you can't trust them that if they can do something like this what else can they do if they become a secretary of state for example a minister or prime minister unlikely with shabnam nasimi but you know, you know never say never the way things are going so let's get into <laughs> plagiarism scandal this is an article that poppy coburn has done and she, she discovered this which is brilliant brilliant research Great work, Poppy. Poppy was actually supposed to come on the channel today uh, on this show to talk about this, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the Christmas period is it's all chaotic uh, thanks to Mick Lynch. Uh, so I think we're going to get her to come on the show tomorrow or over the next couple of days to talk about this. This article exposed this. <clears throat> so, Shabnam Nasimi has written for The Guardian, of course. Of course, she will write for The Guardian. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, we, we all got drunk at one point. She said, I'm a forge former refugee and a proud Tory. The inhumane Rwanda plan will only damage the party. Ooh. So she's against uh, controlling the borders. We know that. She wants more migration. Inside this article, we have this paragraph. <clears throat> <laughs> the government's determination to tackle illegal migration across the channel is creditable. Cred I have abhorrence and disgust for the people smugglers' deathly business model that risks the lives of too many. Try to roughly remember what that paragraph said. Now, let's go to this article in Conservative Home by Andrew Mitchell. The government's Rwanda plan will be impractical and ineffective and expensive. When you look, scroll down, there is a paragraph. First paragraph says... The government's determination to tackle cross-channel illegal immigration is creditable. <laughs> no one can have anything but abhorrence and disgust for the people smugglers' deathly business model. Wait, what? <laughs> it's literally word by word. <laughs> oh, okay. So, also, if you're going to do plagiarism, are you really going to steal from Andrew Mitchell? Really? Okay. Next. This is an article in the Times. Oh, wow. She wrote for the Red Box. Openness and control can rebuild confidence in the immigration system. When you scroll down, there's, an, there's a paragraph again, says, we already have the advantage of being home, uh, being home to four of the top 10 universities in the world. 
the largest financial center and the most active concentration of technology startup businesses in Europe. Blah, blah, blah. Now, interesting article. Again, in 2019, William Hague wrote an article for the Telegraph. Britain should open its doors to the brilliant, uh, the skilled and the bright. Um, yes, so he basically wrote this. <laughs> Literally did the same thing. <laughs> so when you scroll down in this article, William Hague says, we already have the advantage of being home to four of the top universities in the world, the largest financial center and the most active. <laughs> I can't, I can't give a straight face. I'm trying my best, guys. I'm trying. The best one. Jenny, stay with me. Please stay with me. This is my favorite of all times. She was on LBC. Look at that article on the left. I put a screenshot. Look at the first paragraph. Try to read the first paragraph while she's talking. Just trust me. Watch this and read the paragraph on the left. Look, um, if Scottish independence were a rational solution, nationalists wouldn't have to work so hard at fabricating a problem. I mean, they've not, um, they would not have to contrast Scottish multiculturalism with English xenophobia, nor would they have to exaggerate uh, the difference between Scotland and England over Brexit in a dichotomy, ignoring that nearly four in ten Scots voted to leave in 2016. Um, <laughs> She was literally reading it. She put it on her screen on the monitor. And then she was reading it as she was giving an answer. It during a live interview on LBC. <laughs> she obviously she's not an expert in Scottish politics. Clearly she's not, because she had to <laughs> she had to pick an a, a news article to read it and choose that as her answer. And she spoke well. So a lot of people would be like well, that's a good answer. I mean, I wonder, someone could write that into an article. That is so well well said, very well said, Shabnam Nassim. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is a sad state of affairs uh, when it comes to not just British politics in general, but in reality, the basic aspects of the Tory party. The most successful established political party in history of democracies is what it is now. Not only has gone left wing, but it's lost all its qualities of being able to be organized, to go with the same direction, have a united force behind it, and pick the right candidates. That's, that's just simple stuff. But no, they are also going with identity politics. They are also going with sub stories. They are also going with, if you, it's basically like X Factor after the third, fourth season when it became just about drama and, um, again, sob stories. Now, she's got a background uh, from Afghanistan and, you know, hardship, her family escaping, all that stuff. Well, we've all been there. And my, my, my mother was a political refugee from Iran. I'm not going to cry about it. The things happen. doesn't make you who you are right now. It's not part of your identity. If you're going to go around and just completely rant about that, saying, well, I tick one of the boxes. And I'm also female, and I know what a female is. Yay, at least she knows what a female is. I hope she does. But we are where we are, ladies and gentlemen. This channel will expose all political establishment figures, regardless of the fact that they are red or blue or orange. Yeah, they still exist. Thank you so much for the support. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.